All right, welcome everyone to our very first Getting Started with Book Creator webinar series. This is a ser three-part series that we're kicking off together today. Um, my name is Monica Burns. Um, I'm a book creator ambassador and founder of ClassTechTips.com, and I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you so we can jump into our webinar together today. Just so you know, on the right hand of your screen, that go to webinar control panel, you can hit the orange button on the left hand side and it'll collapse so it won't take up as much of your screen. You can type in any questions that you have um, in the question panel. This is going to be an interactive day together. Um, so there'll be times where I'll um, ask you to, to go off and try some things while I scroll through the questions and respond as well. Um, so you can go ahead and type in um, any questions that you have there. Um, or you can place some, um, you'll see some notes from me um, inside the chat as well. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you. Um, we're here today for part one in a three-part series on Book Creator. So if you have Book Creator um, open on your iPad, that is fantastic. If you just need to start those wheels spinning to download it, we're going to use either the free or the paid version on the iPad today. So either one um, you can take a look at and explore um, and play along with us today. The goal of our session together is to introduce Book Creator um, over the course of the next three sessions. And so what we're going to do in today's session is give an overview of Book Creator. We're going to look at some project ideas and, and applications for your classroom. And we're also going to play around with some of the key features of Book Creator. So if you have some experience with Book Creator already, um, it'll feel like a bit of a review um, because these sessions are designed for teachers who are just getting started. Um, but you, if you haven't been in the app recently, there's been some big updates. And so we'll go through some of those pieces as well. Our session next Wednesday is Session two is all about supporting students with graphic organizers and templates. So we'll build off some of the work that we are doing today and start taking that to the next level with preparing students to go off on their own um, and to work collaboratively with partners um, as they are completing tasks. Um, so we'll take a look at that in session two. Session three, we'll take that collaboration and creation to the next level when we'll talk about sharing with authentic audiences. So that's just a quick overview of what we'll be doing during this special kickoff series in Book Creator. And so again, for those of you just popping in, you'll want to make sure you have Book Creator downloaded on your iPad right next to you because we'll be doing some pause and try it out. If you have any questions as we're going through, please type them in the question box. And we are going to um, pause at different places to try out some activities. And that'll be a chance for me to review your questions, answer some questions as you're going through um, our session today. So before we get started, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a poll out to you all. So I'm just going to minimize. Um, Oops, um, there we go here. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, just give a quick poll. Um, some of us already um, did this piece already, and I'm just going to um, exit out of here. Just give me one second. Um, here, you should still see my session um, um, board right here. I'm going to go ahead and give a poll out. So you should see a poll pop up on your screen with three choices. Um, so go ahead and select the following. How familiar are you with Book Creator? And I'm seeing um, we have about 50% of the votes have come in or the answers have come in so far. 
Almost 90% of us have voted, so I see that most of you have played around with Book Creator a few times before. Many of you use Book Creator regularly, so this will be a nice review on some of the key features today. Um, those of you who use Book Creator regularly will definitely want to check out some of our special monthly sessions this summer that go into a deep dive with individual um, topics, um, whether it's all about science, all about narrative writing. You may have seen some of that on the Book Creator site. And I see about 20% of us are brand new to Book Creator. So we'll be moving um, slow today as well through some of these features um, designed especially for those of you who are getting started. Um, the next question is, what grade level of students do you work with? And not all of the above um, is if you're working with more than one of those grade bands, which I know many of um, us who are working in schools from an um, instructional design or support standpoint um, would fall into that category. So it looks like as our votes come in, we have about three quarters of our votes in, that the Majority of us are working in K2 or 3-5. We have some nice representation, about 20% um, in that 6-12 band as well. So we'll be sharing a range of examples that you'll hear me say, um, but you'll want to be thinking about how this connects to, to your classroom as well. And our final question before we jump back in is what is your role in education? Are you a classroom teacher leading a group of students that you see all day, every day, or maybe switch around in a few different groups? Are you technology support staff, school admin, or do you fall into that other category? Um, I know I'm an other right now when I do teacher training and push into different schools for professional development. Looks like we have about 85% of us voted, um, creeping up there to 100%. And it looks like we have a, a pretty good split into thirds there. Um, we have a few more classroom teachers, but a good deal of technology support staff. And then those of us who have other roles in education as well. So we're going to go ahead. Um, I'm going to close this poll and jump back out here um, into our session together. So you should be able to see my screen right now. So as I mentioned, our session one today is all about getting started with Book Creator, an overview of what Book Creator is, a few project ideas to get your wheels spinning about how this will work in your classroom, as well as some cross-curricular applications. So how can you use this tool um, in your classroom if you were working with a, a range of, of students as well, um, as thinking about making the most of what might be happening in both social studies and science, we'll talk through some of those pieces. And then of course, we'll have time for our hands-on going over some of the key features where you'll be working on your device as I answer some questions. And then we'll carve out um, the last section of tonight to do just that, to address any questions that you have about using Book Creator in your class if you've already jumped in or you're excited to use maybe the last few weeks or kick off the school year um, with Book Creator um, next year. So what is Book Creator? Well, Book Creator is an open-ended creation tool. It can be used to create and publish books and provides a really customizable experience. So one of my favorite things to talk about when I visit schools and, and meet with teachers is this concept of tasks before apps, right? Really putting the learning objective first. And one reason that I love Book Creator so much is because it's so customizable. It's open-ended. Um, students can create something that's really true to their learning, and you can guide them in a direction for creating something for an authentic audience. And authentic audiences are something we're going to talk about um, in session three of our Getting Started series. So Book Creator is open-ended. You start with the blank page and you're able to create your own story, create your own step-by-step -step guide, create your own manual or report, you name it. It gives students and teachers and users of any type the ability to create their own books, their own interactive books, and publish them. And in session three, we'll be talking about that sharing piece when we're um, thinking about authentic audiences. And it really is a customizable experience. And what you'll see today as we move through the key features of Book Creator is that you can really make this your own. 
And even if you're asking students to do essentially the same thing, um, you can make sure that that experience is just right for them. So we'll talk a bit about differentiation. We'll talk a bit about accessibility as we move through today. And you'll notice on the monthly webinar um monthly webinar um, series that are taking place um, starting in June um, and going through the end of the year, um, we're going to be talking about um, some of those aspects a little more in depth as well. So Book Creator is available for iPads in the Apple Store, for Android devices in the Google Play Store, as well as for Windows tablets. So today, the experience that we're going to be looking at together is for the iPad. If you are using this on an Android or Windows tablet, you can follow along. Um, I think you'll be able to work through it just with us, not a problem, but we're really focused at the iPad, um, iPad app today, and you'll see the screenshots and modeling that goes along with the iPad um, tool. You may have noticed when you were searching for um, Book Creator in the Apple App Store that there is a free and a paid version. Now, the free version is great for those of you who are just trying it out, deciding if this is just right for you and your students. But the paid version is really what you'll want to, um, to grab if you are using this all the time in your classroom. And many schools that are um, using Book Creator um, are using this cross-curricular, not just for one activity, but for students to demonstrate, represent, and share their understandings across multiple um, parts of the school day. So with that paid version, it is eligible for that volume purchasing um, program discount. So if you're making that bulk purchase of 20 or more um, of the apps, you do get that 50% off um, if you're deploying them that way. Um, it's a wonderful option for using in lots of different environments. And we'll take a look at some project ideas and, and really what you can make um, together today. So to address that question of what can you make with Book Creator, you know, the possibilities are really endless and you might already be thinking, or maybe you've posted in the questions and I'll take a look as in a moment, um, that you have created something with your students that falls into a different category. And if you visit bookcreator.com and you go to the blog um, right there, um, you'll find lots of examples and I'll share a few that are featured on the blog. Um, you'll find lots of examples of of how you can use Book Creator in your classroom um, by just learning about what other teachers are doing all over the world. And I'm sure the folks at Book Creator um, who are in a different time zone than I am today um, would really appreciate you sharing any of your stories as well um, because if you look at their blog, there's just wonderful things happening in, in teachers' classrooms. And um, I know when I was in the classroom and reading stories like that, it was you know partly inspiration and then also something where you know I knew I could brag about my students' work as well um, when they were creating great things on their devices. So when we're thinking about what you can make, Make digital portfolios, poetry books, step-by-step -step guides, science reports, learning journals, comics, you know, you name it. There are so many things that you can have students create um, with Book Creator. So how are teachers using Book Creator? Well, they're using it as a tool to publish student work, for having students demonstrate their understanding to promote collaboration. And that could be something in a shared screen or we each make our own page, something we'll talk about more in session three, to set a purpose for learning. In session two, we're going to talk a lot about um, setting up templates, um, having students ready with graphic organizers, really guiding them through the process and scaffolding that together. And then, of course, creating for an authentic audience. So you might have students create something in book creator that's saved as a movie that families can watch. Um, you might have students publish in Book Creator and you upload it to the iBook store and track the downloads and encourage others on social media to find your book and comment and all of those great things. So there's lots of ways that teachers are, are using this in the classroom. Um, and you'll your wheels, I'm sure, are spinning already, or you might have, again, some things that you could add to this list based on your own experience, since we have a nice chunk of the attendees today um, who have used this regularly with their students. So if you take a look at the next three examples, um, there's a bit.ly, a short link down there at the bottom. You can 
copy that or take a screenshot or just go straight out to Book Creator's blog to hear more about the stories um, that you see popping up on the screen here. Um, so the first one is all about how second graders use Book Creators to um, share family history um, with grandparents. So you can see a screenshot of what the page six of six, uh, that last uh, page with the audio recording, something that you'll get a chance to play around with today. So to learn more about that specific um, project idea and that school story, um, you can visit bookcreator.com and go to their blog to read about that one. Um, there's also a wonderful story about creating ebooks in a second and third grade science classroom, um, all about weather instruments. And you can see um, just a little bit of a teaser for what we'll be doing in just a few minutes with adding images, adding text, combining with the pen tool to draw on the screen. So lots of options there and that bit.ly on the bottom, whether you jot that down or take a screenshot or just um, do a a mental bookmark for later um, if you're interested in incorporating an activity like this into an elementary science classroom or taking it up a notch for your older students. And then, of course, you can use Book Creator to create all sorts of, of informational text. You'll see this is the cover of a book um, that students have made. And if you go again to that um, blog, um, page um, that bit leads down at the bottom. It goes into much more detail about this particular project idea um, and in case that's something you want to replicate and bring back into your classroom. So why are teachers using Book Creator? Well, students can make interactive pages. They can combine media. There's accessibility support and their final products are completely shareable. So we're going to look today um, in our getting started session one at some of these interactive um, features so that you have a chance with your iPad right next to you to play along. Um, you'll see how you can combine different types of media onto one page, whether that's an image, whether that's a video, something that students created in another app and they're importing in. Um, as well as recording audio. You'll notice some of the accessibility support from the open dyslexic font um, to putting in text to go along with an image. So students reading a book with guided access can tap and hear what a picture is about if they are a low vision student. And we'll also look at how um, you can create shareable products and that's such a huge part of of giving students an opportunity to not just consume content on their mobile devices but to also create content on their devices so as we're going along today um, we're going to jump right in um, you'll notice right now at the bottom of the screen is bookcreator.com's um, website where you can go for tons of information and then my email monica at classtechtips.com in case you have questions after today um, or later tonight or tomorrow morning um, and you want to shoot me an email as well so what we're going to do right now is we're going to jump into book creator I love for you, if it's not already sitting next to you, to have Book Creator open on your iPad. Because I'm going to move through some steps, then I'm going to give you a chance to try things out, um, and I'll scroll through and take a look at your questions as you're working on um, little, you know, try nows um, as we move through the rest of our time together this evening. So when you open up Book Creator, you'll see that. When you go to make a new book, you're given six options. You can create a portrait square of, or landscape of a blank canvas or a portrait square and landscape for a comic book. And if you're in the free version, you'll see that the comic option is disabled for you. Um, you're only working on the blank space. We are going to just look at the blank pages together today in case some of you are trying things out on the free app. But the comic book option is just so fantastic, um, and you may already have explored this if you're one of the, the folks joining us today who use Book Creator regularly um, in your class. And so with the comic books, which we won't go into too much today, you'll notice that you have your frame set up. There are some shapes we will take a look at um, that you can use to really make a dynamic final product. Wonderful for younger students, wonderful for older students who are creating, um, maybe reading graphic novels and want to create their own. So you can go ahead and tap the portrait square or landscape. I like using the landscape when I demo with teachers because we are going to um, 
fill up the whole screen. So right away you get started with the cover. If you're not ready to design your cover, you can hit the arrow on the right hand side of the screen and add a new page. But today we're going to look at a cover together um, and design a cover um, as we work through um, with each other today. So if you take a look at the top of the screen, there's a plus sign and that plus sign is the universal add sign. You probably have noticed it in other iOS um, apps. And so right here, you'll see that there are a few different options um, that we are going to explore together. You can add a photo, add something that a camera you take in the moment, a picture you take in the moment with the camera. You can use the pen tool to draw. You can add text, add sound, um, as well as some of those shapes that you see down at the bottom and toggling back and forth. The I button to the right, that inspector, um, is going to default to having us make changes or edit or alter to the page background. You'll notice as we move through and we start adding different things that I inspector is going to help us um, make things specific to whatever is highlighted at that specific time. Um, so right now, this is just giving me the choice of whether or not I want to change the, the um, background and the page color and some other pieces that we're going to um, breeze over as we move through today. So let's go back to that plus sign. If I go into add a photo, you'll notice that photos pop up from any album that you have on your iPad, any pictures that you've already saved. This is an album that I have with pictures from an all about the Bronx Zoo. And so you can um, decide if you want to preload an iPad with images, if you want students to save an image from an outside source, if you want them to snap a picture of a picture <laughs> to get it onto their device. But this will default to you taking out any um, pictures or connecting with any pictures that are in your camera roll, as we used to call it, or the photos area of your iPad. An important thing to remember is the first time you use this, and it might have just happened for you, is it will say, do we have permission? Does Book Creator have permission to access your photos? And if you say no, um, more often than not in a classroom of students, they'll just instinctively say no because they just know they shouldn't be doing anything extra or downloading something, right? Um, it's always with the best intentions. You will have to go into the settings, um, go into your settings to um, give permission for the app to access the photos, access the microphone. Um, that's just a few steps going in the settings. Settings, but it might come up if for some reason you're saying, I know I have photos on my device or my students have photos on their device. That might be just a, a little bit of a wall that you've hit there. And so I'm going to go ahead and tap and add a photo to my screen and see that blue line with those dots around. That means I've selected this photo. I can spin it in any direction using two of my fingers. I can pinch it to um, shrink or enlarge it um, and move it around the screen while it's highlighted in blue. So that eye inspector is highlighted and that's going to give me some options for what I want to do here. I can add a link. So maybe this is going to be hyperlinked, thinking back to our purpose of creating an interactive book. Maybe this will be hyperlinked to a link of the Bronx Zoo or a page um, on the web that tells more about this um, particular trip or event. Underneath is that accessibility option. This is so important, um, whether or not you're going to be sharing these books that you make with students who will require accessibility features. It's just such a nice um, good practice to have with students. The same way you'd have conversations on citing images um, and being good digital citizens, you know, this all falls into that category. You know, you want to make sure that students are making work that everyone can see and share and be a part of. And so you might have them type in one sentence that describes the picture. Um, I think it's just a wonderful best practice for students, whether or not you knowingly are going to share this with folks who will need those accessibility features enabled. Below that is the layout. This is really just arranging the items on the page. Right now, we just have one item on the page, so we don't have to worry about layering content on top of each other. So now I want you to try. If your book creator is open, I want you to go to a page just like mine 
and add an image to the page. And as you do that, I'm going to minimize my screen a bit so I can pull up any questions. So if you have some questions about what we've done so far, um, you can go ahead and type them in. But I'd like for us to take just about two minutes to add some um, images to your page. So Heidi asked if there is a back channel. Um, one thing that is, you know, I would encourage you to do is if you're on Twitter today, um, you can go ahead and use the hashtag book creator. It's the same hashtag we're using for the book creator chats. Um, so that's a great place. We don't have a set back channel for us. Um, it might be something we try out for session two. But for today, if you want to go ahead and um, add that book creator hashtag to any tweets you have during the session. Um, that would be great as well. Um, Mackenzie, it sounds like you're having some audio issues. Um, you may want to close out any other things that are running on your computer. Um, GoToWebinar usually takes up a lot of bandwidth, so you may want to make sure your Dropbox isn't syncing um, or anything like that. And if you have any other questions, you can go ahead and type them into the question piece um, and we'll take just another minute for you to practice and add um, that image onto your page. Marianne asked a question, can images be added directly from Google Drive? Um, so as you saw, and I'll kind of toggle back here, um, when you're going to, um, and you should see it here on the screen, um, when you are going to add that plus sign and the photos, is going to connect you just to your photos um, on your um, iPad, save to the, the photos area, the used to be called the camera roll. So if you have something in Google Drive, you'll just want to do that um, hard tap to save the image and that way you can access it um, that way. You may decide that you want to make a folder in the photo section of your iPad with images for a particular project um, for students to, to be able to access there as well. Great question. So now we're going to go ahead and jump back in. You can keep trying with adding images if you want to, and please feel free to keep adding questions there as well. So now we're going through and we're going to um, add um, from the pen tool. So we're skipping over camera today because I'm using screenshots to ensure that everything's coming through smoothly. The camera is just going to do just that. Open up the camera and let you take a video to add in or let you take a um, snapshot and add it right in the moment. Um, that might be useful if kids are responding to reading and they're snapping a picture from inside their book. It may be useful if you want kids to do a bit of a testimonial and add a video in um, response to a prompt that you have if you're using Book Creator for a, a reading learning journal. Um, so definitely some applications for that as well. So the pen tool, which you see is a third one down when we go to our ad, will automatically prompt you to choose a color. Um, so you can go ahead and tap that black dot at the top and change the color if you want to. If you don't like the ones that it shows, you can hit the more button and I'll let you get a little bit more specific and then it'll save it in your recent ones. Um, you can also hit um, the pen button right next to it. That'll let you choose between three different widths. And then you're um, able to, with that last option, erase anything that you've drawn. So if you go ahead now and choose a color, if you're following along with us, um, you can draw just like I did. Um, this is a, a demo I often do when visiting schools and sharing Book Creator, just drawing an arrow, um, drawing a circle. But you might want students to write something um, like their name if it's easier for them to do that as opposed to typing in an answer. And so once you've added that to your screen, 
like I've done here. Now remember before our picture was highlighted in blue. Now our draw, <laughs> our pen uh, drawing is highlighted with that blue box around it. Now I can move this around. I can pinch it um, or spread it to make it a little bit larger. I still have that accessibility option to type in what that drawing is doing um, so someone can tap and hear what's happening on the screen. And this is where that move to front, move to back option will come in handy. And you see it there because now I can layer these two pieces on top of, on top of one another. So go ahead and use the pen draw the pen tool to draw right now. Um, add an illustration, write your name, and I encourage you if you've used this before to go ahead and play around with the accessibility, adding that onto um, the actual creation that you've made, um, or layering things back and forth. And again, this is a good time if you have any questions, whether it's about the photo ad um, or the pen tool or the camera, you can go ahead and type it in. I'll give us another uh, two minutes to play with the pen um, drawing tool. So as you're playing around with that, um, I encourage you to check out the accessibility option when you've highlighted your drawing tool and you've hit that I inspector and it will um, let you um, add in a sentence that describes how to, um, or what's happening, excuse me, with the particular drawing. Take another minute or so to play along with that. And again, you have that question space if you want to type in any questions related to what we're doing or maybe something a little bit different. Okay, we'll jump back in. Of course, you can still play around with that um, pen tool in our get it start, getting started session today. So next you'll see as I've gone ahead and hit that add button one more time, below the pen tool is the text tool. And so when I go to add text, I simply have a text box to add text to. So I'm gonna type in whatever it is I want to um, appear in text on the page. Now, if your students are typing in another program, say they've written their whole science report in Google Docs and it's been a collaborative, um, wonderful experience, I would encourage you to have them copy the text um, from somewhere else on their iPad. Maybe they emailed it to themselves or they can access Google Docs on their page. Um, on, on their pages, um, wherever it's been typed up, and they can copy it right into here. After you've put your text in, um, you can go ahead and add it to the page. And now I've already manipulated the font um, on the page. Um, when you highlight the text, remember um, our pen illustration and our photo last time we had them highlighted in blue now we have this highlighted in blue when we tap that um, then we can go ahead and manipulate the font size so I made this the font larger you can make it bold italic underline you can change the font which we'll take a closer look at in a moment you can change the color, um, the background, shadow, if it's going to be left or right aligned or justified, and again, that um, arrangement of the layout. If I hit the font button, you'll notice there's lots of choices. I've clicked open sans at the bottom, but right below, above it is open dyslexic font. Now you might have a student in your class who is dyslexic, so you want everyone to use that font so that theirs is clearly shareable um, and everyone can read it and it's ready for any audience. You might have that open conversation with your class or you might not, um, but it's a great best practice to making your um, piece as 
as accessible as possible. If you take a look um, back to where we just were here with that inspector button highlighting the text, um, look at where it says background underneath font color background. I can choose a color and it will make a box around my text. So it's a nice way to um, just have some design. Again, you can customize the color if you don't like that one as well. So go ahead right now and add text to your cover page and I'd love for you to change the font and color and if you've used this before and um, this is a little bit of old news for those of you who use this regularly with your students go ahead and play around with some of the um, different accessibility fonts as well as the alignment right now and we'll take two minutes to play with adding text and changing font and color and again this is a good time for you to add any questions um, to the question box as well so I see a question from Annie. Can you please explain again what the accessibility piece is? Great question. So the accessibility um, aspect sets you up for if students are reading an iBook on a device that has guided access enabled. So that means that you have a student who is using the guided access features for a variety of reasons. Um, they may be using it to move from to zoom in and zoom out or to make the text larger. They might be using accessibility features so that they can say to the iPad, read this page. And when they read the page, they'll also say there is a picture of a woman standing in front of the Bronx Zoo because you put that as part of the text in the accessibility piece. So it's something that you'll want to um you'll want to embed as a best practice if you're talking about to students about making something really shareable. You might skip over it and say, well, we're not doing anything um, that the audience is going to need um, those extra accessibility features enabled. But the wording, um, I know see Kelly's question here, the accessibility wording will not show up on the page. It's hidden and it'll only be used if you have the iPad in the accessibility mode. Um, so for those students who need that extra support. So it, again, it's just a great best practice. It's something really special about Book Creator. Um, accessibility is so important to the folks at Apple and many apps I have set up for success for creating products that are accessible and make the most of those features. And Book Creator is just a great example of really being equitable as well. Um, so Lynn asked about the open dyslexic font. So from a reader's point of view, it's just going to be font. Um, if you saw here, and I'll pull it back up, although it's a little bit small, look at the open dyslexic font here on my screen. See how it's weighted down here at the bottom? That um, is designed to bring a reader's eyes to keep the letters weighted. So your students who are not dyslexic wouldn't even notice. They would just think that this is a fancy font. Um, so it's just something that is, again, going to be really helpful for readers who are dyslexic. Um, and it's something that your other students, it won't make a difference for. They may not even notice or know, um, but it's just a good best practice to have in place. Um, so Cindy, yes, you can share an iBook that has video without using iBooks. Um, we'll talk about sharing um, during session three specifically, so stay on the lookout um, for that as well. So I'm going to jump um, back in um, to our next piece. Um, when we go up here, I'm going to go ahead and press play so you can see this. We've added some text um, as well. So now I'm up here with, ooh, I want to just go back um, one more for us. I jumped ahead. I was excited there. Um, so we're back here at our plus sign, and this is where you can add sound. We looked at the other features, and so we're adding sound now. So when I hit add sound, it gives me the option to record audio. So you can tap, and it will record for you. If for some reason it's not coming up for you, it might be for that same reason I mentioned earlier about photos, um, that this is an issue where you need to go into your settings and give permission because when someone opened the app the first time, they said, no, you do not have permission to record my voice. So you can change that back in the settings. So you can tap that button and you can um, add that recording to the page. Um, you'll notice down at the bottom, it says import from iPad. If you have other recordings saved on your device, 
device. Um, say it's a song, say it's a recording that you've done in another app. Um, you can edit save to your iPad. You can import this here um, as well. And so after you're done recording, it'll say, are you finished? You say yes, and then your recording button will pop up on the screen. You can keep it this size, you can make it larger, you can make it smaller. It's really up to you. Um, this is wonderful for students who maybe they're making a book, they're in seventh grade, they're making a book that's gonna be shared with um, first graders. Those first graders can just tap the button and hear the whole book um, read aloud. So not only is it just wonderful when you're capturing the voices of students in the moment, that excitement when they're talking about their trip to the Bronx Zoo or their science experiment or why they love this book that they read, um, you have the option to do that as well. So go ahead now, um, record your voice by adding audio to the page. Your sound is off, so no one will hear you um, in the webinar. Um, so go ahead and record your voice and add audio to the page and keep these questions coming. Okay, William, I hear that there's a bit of a delay um, that you're seeing between the, the video feed and the webinar and my audio. I know sometimes that's me uh, talking a bit fast. I'm based here in New York, so it, it kind of comes with the territory, but I'll try my best to slow down um, a bit. And again, I just um, would remind everyone that if you have a lot of applications running, a couple web browsers open, um, GoToWebinar does suck up a lot from your um, bandwidth. I know I'm hard hardwired today as opposed to being on Wi-Fi um, to try and make it as smooth as possible for you. Um, but that's just something to, to think about. Take another um, 30 seconds or a minute there, um, not quite, to record your voice and add some audio to the page. All right, the final piece I want to share with you um, has to do with adding. Um, I mentioned before how you can go to that inspector um, after you've added audio. So you can't see it because it's in the corner of my screen, but my audio is um, highlighted in blue. So when I hit the inspector there, it tells me that I have a seven second recording. Um, again, I can put in some other information if I want to. But now we'll move back to that plus sign. And if you look at the very bottom, when we press the plus sign before we had our text option, our camera option, I've toggled from media down at the bottom to shapes. And so because of that, I now have some options. And you can swipe when you're in this view and you can go ahead um, and tap and add any of those shapes. Your rectangle doesn't have to stay blue because when you added that to your page, um, you can again keep it highlighted, like you see my pink square, my or my magenta circle, excuse me, and then you can tap on the inspector button and go ahead and um, add that um, and just customize it with the color and all those pieces as well. So you can go ahead and add some shapes and move them around your page. We have just about two minutes left together. So as you're playing around with your shapes, I'm gonna put up our ending slide and encourage you to put in any questions that you have. So today's goal was to give you an overview of how to use Book Creator, some of the basics and going through the key features to share a couple project ideas which you heard me mention as we moved through and um, some of the examples on the bookcreator.com blog. And what I'm gonna encourage you to do um, for next time is to create a book. Um, make something, maybe it's something you'd share with your students, maybe it's a scrapbook from a family vacation um, and all of that. Um, but you'll have that piece there um, for, for you to kind of come back together with as well. So we have just about another minute together. If you have any more questions, you can go ahead and type them in. This recording is being saved, um, so you're going to um, be able to um, review it. So if you're having that delay with an audio or anything like that um, and you want to review it later, it'll be saved for you. And I encourage you um, not just to create a book between our time together um, next week, but also to join tomorrow's book creator chat using the book creator hashtag. It's a Twitter chat all about app smashing and you can learn more on bookcreator.com. 
So our time now is 7.45 Eastern time. I want to keep us true to our 45 minute block. I know everyone has busy schedules at the end of the school year. Thank you so much for joining session one of Getting Started with Book Creator. If you have any questions or want more info, head over to bookcreator.com or of course reach out to me, um, monica at classtechtips.com is my email or you can find me on Twitter at Class Tech Tips. Have a wonderful rest of your evening or afternoon, and I look forward to seeing you all next Wednesday, same time, um, for our session two.